Hello and welcome to another episode of Ten for Ten. I'm Brig. I'm Sky. And basically, Ten for Ten is essentially where the mangas that we would typically read, we're going to switch them, make the other one read them, and have them read ten chapters. Because the thing is this, you know, as you probably guess we both like mangas, but we don't like the same mangas. We tend to like very different things. Very different. And even though we like, we really like what we read, you know, sometimes we get the other one to try to read it as well. It usually doesn't work out. So this is a series where we get to torture each other by forcing the other one to read ten chapters of whatever we choose. Exactly. And then at the end we rate them and say if we would continue reading them or not. Yes, and we rate them out of five. Out of know, five. And it's like the FYI, standard. we are not, we are not, we are not reviewers, we're not commentators. Like, no, we are the bomb! No. The no. fact of the matter, this is our, just our own personal opinion. Just because we don't like something doesn't mean you won't like it. Okay, now with that put out the way, the manga that I had to read was The Summit. A Yaoi manga. And I had to read a horror slash tragedy slash wasn't a shoujo, but I could easily put it as one. Uh, what was it called? Uh, English it's called School Live, but let me look it up real quickly here. In the Japanese. Yes, I'm horrible with names, and if you haven't figured that out yet, then you have not been paying attention. Shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. You know, this actually doesn't okay. mean anything. Okay, Gaku Gurashi. Okay. That's what it's called. Also known as School Live. Now, do you want to go first, or should I go first? It's a matter to me. Then I'll go first. The Summit. I hated it. I mean, the art style was... Like, it was just bad. The art style was bad. The characters looked weird. I mean, like, they looked, looked like they had chins that could cut glass. Chins. That, not as bad, though, as Skip Beats chins. Have eyes. Have Skip Beats chins? Like, the eyes were weird. The proportions were weird. Like, everything about these guys looked weird. And then we had the characters themselves. They were as one-dimensional as you can possibly get. I mean... We had protagonist. What's his name? I don't remember his name. I'm just gonna call him what his. I'm just gonna call him by his one. The, the one dimension we do see with him. Angry kid. Angry guy. All right. We have the love interest. His character trait: annoying. Also known as also everyone's boy toy. Seriously, haven't you noticed something? Every single male character that bumps into him wants to screw him. I have noticed that. Yes, I did. I mean, what the hell? What the actual hell? Every single one, even the ones which were clearly stated to be straight, suddenly want to screw him. That is true. That is true. Why? I mean, the main character, I mean, I can understand why the main character who had his heart horrendously torn out of him by a woman may, would, in a moment of weakness and drunkenness, perhaps, kiss the guy Right? And I can understand why a relationship would build out of there, but... Everyone else is what you question? Everyone else. Absolutely everyone else. Like, is it his personality? It can't be. He has an awful personality. Like, this, this guy has the personality you'd want to smack him, just how annoying he is. He's constantly stealing, constantly getting into trouble. He has horrible choice in friends. It's true, he does have that and, choice. Like, he is literally trouble incarnate. And not the fun trouble, either. Not dangerous trouble, just like annoying. Why do I have to put up with this trouble? I honestly don't see the appeal in him. I mean, granted, he tries to do housework and he does it kind of well, but apart from that, nothing. And then at the end of the ten chapters, it tries to imply that this guy may have some sort of, of some sort of hardcore criminal past, but no, he doesn't. Yeah, I, I explained to him later. No, 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 like, you don't even have, he didn't even have to explain to me. Hey, I'm like, no, he doesn't, okay? His hardcore criminal past is being the ringleader's girl girl toy. That's his, that don't is... do you mean boyfriend? That makes You can't call him a girl, you can't call him a boy. That's debatable. No, you can't. Anyway. No. I've seen, I've, I've met cross-dressers. 
that are more masculine than this guy. <laughs> That's funny. I've actually met cross-dressers. Like in real life who, or like in stories? Real life. Okay. Who are more masculine than this guy. Okay, fine. You're going to these cross-dressers. I actually have one who looked very much like a girl come on to me. And? I have no... I do not doubt in my brain for a second that this person would be able to break this guy's back. So like I, every single one of them. I'm just wondering how how that person flirted with you. That's what I'm questioning. Well, it's like this: you make a joke, they joke back. You make a joke, they joke back, and then suddenly they're trying to slip you their number. Hey, I just met you, and it's crazy, but here's my number. And see you never. Oh. But once again, it's like, and the thing is, like. I'll be honest, okay? I, I'm a bit prejudiced against these kinds of mangas in the first place, all right? And unfortunately, everything that I dislike about this manga, I found in this one. The characters, the constant sparkles. I forgot it even had those, to be honest. Like every friggin' page. The zero personality. There's so much effort. There's so much emphasis on fan service. With this poorly drawn, there's one that shares a chapter where the guy tries to get him to help him take a bath. Oh, but yeah. Done. But I thought that was more like just like bath. Yeah. It, no. Guess what? Um, oh, I need you to do this. And I'm <laughs> watching this and do this. And, oh, and then, the ne and then the next page, it's done literally scrubbing the other guy's back. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's fan service right there. Okay. That is fan service. It's like... There is no actual story here. The story, the, the story, the selling point of this, the entire selling point of that manga is they're homosexuals. That is the selling point. Like, and that shouldn't be the case. That shouldn't be the case. These are stories that should be able to stand on their own two bloody feet without having to rely on a gimmick like that. It's not even a gimmick. Hello, I mean, what century do we live in? You know? So what if there's still what if there's still plenty of places in the world where where things like homosexuality isn't as isn't very well accepted? But guess what? In America, homosexuals can now marry. Yeah. They will spread to other places in the world. Okay? Stop using this as a gimmick. Stop using this as the only thing to bring in readers. Okay? Get a good story. Get interesting characters. Make people want to read your story, not to see two boys making out, but rather because they are honestly invested in an interesting relationship that feels real. But what can I say? It's like I didn't like the summit at all. Did I find it unreadable? No, not by a long shot. You know, there is like perhaps one character in the story that I actually. If that would actually would care to learn more about. And you know what? Maybe the story does get better along the way. But honestly, I don't... What is that character? Out of curiosity? Actually, no. No, two characters. Okay, what are these two characters? The woman that tore out his heart. Oh, yeah, okay. Her. Though I get a feeling we're never going to see her again. You get, to, like, a few phone calls from her, but that's about it. And let me guess, does it lead anywhere? I think him venting... So basically, it leads absolutely nowhere and adds nothing to the story except he gets to be even angrier than he was before. His temper does shrink later on. No, it doesn't. I guess. I know because I've read it. I've read the story. I actually like the story. I don't think it's the best, but I actually like the story. I actually find it funny. I didn't find it at all funny. I find it funny. I find it funny, and I find it. What did you find funny? I find it funny all the crazy things the blonde guy get the blonde meaning the one who steals gets into. I find it crazy how the guy, the main character, he gets angry at him. I find it funny how we have all these little crazy scenarios. And I also like how we have one character, uh, the blonde, you could say boyfriend, past boyfriend, it's not his boyfriend, but he comes along and he just like murders everyone. I just like to see all those things. I and like that's it. the other character I would like to see more of. Titan, yeah, you get to see a lot more of him. Because, guess what, so far he seems like the only interesting character in the series. Yeah, you get to see a lot more of him. And you know what? I'm willing to bet the reason Titan is bending over backwards to help this, to help Mr. Troublemaker here is because probably he feels guilty for dragging the Troublemaker into the life of crime because this guy's only going to walk into it on his own. Actually, yeah, he does feel guilty for that. And also, it turns out because he's indebted to the 
blonde guy's brother. So basically, there you go. I was able to predict the plot twist before the plot twist even happened. Before I even knew that there was a plot twist coming. I managed to deconstruct it. You see what I mean? I, to be honest, I like the story. I think it's funny. I think it's great. I don't think it's for everyone. But I think it is one of the better ones that I have read. The better ones? I have read a lot. You know when you read shoujo's? Oh, no. Any genre. No. Don't let me use that. Any genre. When you read tons of that genre. Tons of them. Yeah, you'll find a lot of bad ones. You'll find a lot of bad ones. So, you'll find like so-so ones, then decent ones, and even when you grab one that's decent, you're going to say, yeah, I actually liked it. Because by that time, you've read about 20 crappy ones. Okay, I see where they're coming from. So yes, I do like it, because I've read about 20 crappy ones by the time I get to it. Okay, you'll just take on any ray of sunshine you can see? So yeah, I yeah, like it's it. it's the same thing. So I can say I can find ones that are like the bomb in that genre but it's really hard to find and i'm more likely gonna find crappy ones and then i may find a decent one which in that case it is a decent it's one. not a diamond in the rough but it's more like copper copper <laughs> <laughs> you know you can use your maybe jewelry. bronze maybe you can like put some decorations maybe like make a pot out of it but you're not gonna like put it for your guest of honor <laughs> okay so i'm gonna give it a two out of five okay, okay. i would i would give it a one out of five but I do get the feeling that the story might get better along the way and that the characters might get fleshed out because there is room for it. Like I said, he had his heart torn out by a woman and if she were to appear more often in the story, I do see the characters getting, I do see the character being fleshed out nicely. Fleshed out. Though I will admit, there is very uh, one odd scene that I noticed. Which where one? The, he's left school. Yes. Angry guy. Angry guy has left school He's injured when a former schoolmate comes and... The motorcycle guy? No, no, not a motorcycle guy. Oh, the, the one who's like, hey, I'm still in school. And he's like, oh, really? How are you, man? Yeah, that guy. Like, what was that about? Oh, yeah, I yeah. Mean, like, I, can ex I can explain that. I can explain that. You see, he never really got along with his classmates. I can't figure it out. And then he, he's already been a period of time since he hasn't seen his classmates. You know, he's left school and everything. He's pretty much kind of made a life for himself when his classmates who are still in school, you know, they're doing fine, see him. And in order to wait to puff up themselves, they go up to him and they're like, look, we're better than you because of this and that. He's kind of at that mode where he's like, I don't care. So he's like, hey, how are you? Because he's just like, I don't care. They get upset, so an argument breaks out, he finds it an excuse to beat them up. Which I believe also then that introduces Titan, who's like, don't touch me, yeah. Yeah, Titan does enter there, and he was the best one of that chapter. But it's an odd moment still because you are about to beat up a guy who has to need, whose arm is in a brace and who's crutch and who's walking in a crutch, and he beats you up instead. I mean, just like, those crutches are hard. Though. No, but you seriously, no, 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 no. What was your plan? You were gonna beat him up, and then what? You beat up a guy who's in. You beat up a guy who needs a crutch to walk around. Congratulations, get in jail. That, that, you would have gone in jail no matter what. There are people always who are going to do that. I remember I saw this guy in real life, this guy in a wheelchair, who tried to pick a, pick a fight with this guy who's already taller than most people. Because he's in a wheelchair. What are you going to do? Actually hit the guy in the wheelchair? What are you going to do? Roll over your toes? He said those things because the guy in the wheelchair was trying to pick the fight because guess what? The guy isn't actually going to hit him. The guy isn't actually going to pick a fight with him because he's in a wheelchair. I mean, I hope all. Well, I hope. I hope most wheelchair people aren't like that. I know two guys that were on wheelchairs, and they were nice. They were sweethearts. Yeah, doesn't change the fact that this guy was a jerk, and you're. A, and if you're a jerk, you're going to be a jerk, no matter what it is happens to be your current mode of transportation. That is true. That In is this true. case, a wheelchair. But once again, it's like, why do they fall for this obvious provocation? I mean, were they just idiots? You don't see much of them, so I don't think it really matters. To be honest, I think that was like the only scene they appeared. I'm, I'm like it was just a weird chapter for me because I'm reading it. I'm like, you aren't seriously falling for this. You are in an open public space. Everyone is watching you. Dear Lord, if they someone is recording this, there's oh. always someone recording. As long as we have cameras, someone will be recording. <clears throat> and then he picks a fight with Titan as well. Yeah, you know Titan and then, just and then, rushes him off. And then I look at the fight with Titan. Like, what is your problem? <laughs> what is your actual? You know what? Fine. Get more broken bones. See if I care. <laughs> 
whatever. Okay, so yeah. Two out of five, don't like it, would not keep reading it. Could it get better along the way? Yes, maybe it does. Do you, if you want to read it to find out if it does, go right ahead. All right, so the manga I read, I'm just going to say the name in English, School Life. It's it also known as Gakugurashi, exclamation point. Is yeah. a horror, tragedy, drama, adventure, school life. And I must say I loved it. I have, haven't finished reading it yet, but I did break my rule of trying to stay within the 10 chapters. I instead went over because I really liked it. Essentially the idea is this. There is a, everyone's living in school. There's our four main characters, I believe. Yeah, four characters and they live inside the school and they have school activities. They have classes and there's a zombie apocalypse outside that is trying to kill them. And they're just doing school activities to remind them to keep the zombies, you know, not as the main thought in their mind. The interesting thing about this series is that our protagonist has dissociative identity disorder and not like the whole split personality thing that you see in other shows. But rather, she has convinced herself that the zombie apocalypse has not happened. Yeah. She's in like a huge state of denial. Her existence is denial. You know, she does, if she sees a zombie, no, there's actually a scene where she sees a zombie walking through a hallway and she doesn't call it a zombie, she calls it a delinquent. But you know, keep going. But yeah, and her classmates, instead of, tr or her friends in this case really, instead of trying to convince her that, you know, what she thinks is reality is false, they actually go along with it. And I actually like this because of the fact is, it's, it's sad that she is going through this, but if you're constantly in this world where you can literally die and you have one person who's, yes, is not convinced of that, but she isn't causing trouble. She isn't like doing stupid things like inviting the zombies in. She's just like playing in the hallway while maintaining safe distance or like helping you. Then you're not really going to tell the person their fair world is fake. At least I wouldn't because honestly, I probably would need someone to play pretend with me. Yeah, she cheers them up. That essentially, they're essentially being bandages for each other. They help continue her fake world and she provides them with that humor, that relief that they need from those from the world they're in. And I think that is a great friendship you are seeing. And it's not like they're not denying. They have a character who comes in who is upset at them that they would allow her to continue to live in her delusion world. But they point out the fact that they kind of need this world. They need her fake world. And I like that, that they support it. It's kind of weird, and I know there were a lot of comments when I read it, that they were saying, no, this isn't right. But honestly, I think it is right. You can't just, if you tell her it's a fake world, which it is, it can literally shatter her. And instead of her helping you, it can lead to more problems because she isn't being in a way. She's being it? very helpful. Did you ever see those moments where it looks as if she's starting to realize? Yeah, it does look like she is somewhat aware because sometimes she'll remember show up like a memory where what really happened and you get to see it from her perspective but then it kind of just gets pushed down and then she's just like no it's school time i also like the fact is that it has a very shoujo feel it literally feels like a shoujo for the most part we have a lot of girly moments we have a lot of moments where the way it's drawn it's very soft drawn detail even the zombies don't have a lot of detail to them and I like that because the author doesn't put emphasis on the zombie apocalypse. Instead, reminds you. You see it in the background that stuff are torn apart. You see that they're, one character's always carrying a weapon. But you never see always full blown, like we died in a zombie apocalypse. No, instead they just show you in very subtle ways. So you yourself, it's like the author saying, I know you're intelligent enough to figure this out. I do not need a character to monologue it. Now, I'm not saying monologue is a bad thing. Sometimes it's can beautiful. Be. It can be sometimes, but it, sometimes it can be a great thing. Sometimes you need that monologue. But for the mo but I, for the most part, it's not necessary. You don't really need a monologue for most, usually. 
And I like that this author didn't go for a monologue. They just decided to show you. And I think it's a brilliant way. I think the manga is actually phenomenal. It's funny. It's cute. It is sad. They are sad. A lot of sad moments. But, you know, it's a tragedy. And I just like the fact that it isn't too scary. Because I usually tend to stay away from horror. Because I don't want to have nightmares. Call me a girl. I don't care. <laughs> so... I actually think the manga is great. I will continue to read it, and I give it. Come on, you told me the score. <laughs> you told me the score. Say it. Say it. I'm, I'm gonna give it a five. Out of five. Out of five. Something that she has told me in private that she never intends to do. I, I hate giving perfect scores. I hate it because I think there's always something better. It's just always something better, so why should I give something the perfect score? Because that's implying that this one has reached perfection when something truly you never yeah. truly do. You always, there's always that room for improvement. There's always something that could have been adjusted. There's always something that could have been done better. But I liked this one so much, and I thought it had the perfect element of shoujo, horror, and all those elements beautifully combined in such a, a lovely way that... Honestly, I think anyone, if you love shoujos, you will like this story. Which is weird because usually shoujos, people who like shoujos, if you're a strong lover of that, you probably wouldn't go into that genre. But of horror? Yeah, of horror because shoujos more of a fluffiness. Okay. And this one like a bunny? Yeah. Like, like bunny. Sarah Awkward? Uh, one of my rabbits. She has a really, it's a, a bunny is fat and fluffy. It's you know, you head, should right? you should put a picture to show them. So like maybe then. edit a picture in. I'll fine, I'll put a I get, a picture, get a picture of awkward. I'll edit in a picture of awkward. His full name is Sir Awkward. Sir Awkward. He's so cute. <laughs> He's so cute. So fat. Oh my, oh my god. god. You eat a banana in front of that rabbit and he will still go insane. I should record it. Just watch him go insane. I feel like torturing him with food sometimes. But then I have to give it to him because he just looks so cute when he begs for food. Whatever. Back on subject. Anyway, so yes. I think this manga is great. Anyone who don't let the appearance of the manga, if you like horror and you feel like the appearance is too soft and too fluffy, don't let it fool you. It has the right amount of horror and realistic setting because the girls are intelligent. They are smart. They actually don't do stupid things. They will do things right. Even the girl who lives in her fake world, they don't let her do stupid things. That's one That's one thing I always love. Because the story makes it clear, you know. She isn't an idiot. She, and deep down inside, she knows what's actually going on. She actually saves them a couple of times. Yeah, I actually, I actually did make it to where she did save one of them. Because she's like, oh no, they're going to get killed by zombies. And she jumps in to save one of them. So the fact is that she did jump in there and that she does pull away when zombies happen and that she does listen to them means that she is aware that there is danger, which is one of the reasons why you don't need to break her fantasy world. You don't have to if she's not getting in your way. But, yeah. So yeah, I think the manga is great and I don't think anyone, anyone at all, should be hesitant. Check it out. If you like it, continue. I'm pretty sure you will. If you don't, I mean, that's fine. Everyone has their own cup of tea. But I think it's something worth trying regardless of what you're into. All right then. So what will we be reading next time? You will be reading because he complains so much of the yaoi I gave him. He wants the best of the best. Hey, like I said, okay, I want to believe that I'm wrong about yaoi. Okay, that, it's, that there's definitely something better out there that it's worth reading. So I am pulling the best yaoi stuff I know. So starting with this is a loved by many. If you're into yaoi, you've heard of this manga. You probably heard of this author. It's Ko Na Ya Mo Ne Nyu Re Na Yi. Basically in English, another sleep this night. Okay, I'll read them, enjoy that. And the one she will be reading is actually one that I found recently at, while I was working at my co while I was working at the college, and I just fell in love with this story. Read, read like five volumes in one day. It is called Young Bride Story, or 
Otto Yome Gatari, whatever, young, young, bright, young Bright Story, or A Bright Story, as I read, found it in the bookstore. Well, okay. library. I, this, it's just gorgeous artwork. But, and, uh, yeah, I actually saw a few pages that he showed me. I haven't read it. And yes, I just love the detail. As for mine, I think he's going to, I don't know if he's going to like it, but I am, I do know why it's considered one of the best, because it has an actual plot. It has, Thank God. It has, well, I'm not sure about, yes, there is character development. They don't, the gay characters that do appear are there for reasons. They aren't like, you just coincidentally happen to be gay in this word, or you turn gay. None of that. I like that this author is not about that. He's always like, it's never the case of, ah, oh, you're a boy. I don't know if I like you. It's like, are you gay or not? He's like, no, I'm not gay. All right, moving on. It's that. That's how that author plays it off. It's never the case of, it's a boy. I don't know how to feel. It's always like, yeah, I'm gay. Well, the author just like knows. Like, I know there's gay people. I'm not going to say it's the issue of gender. It's just like, are you gay? Do you sway that way? Can this be a thing? Joanna, we're not reviewing the manga yet. I know. But it's one of the things I hate that Yao. Yeah.